So welcome to the first stage in my build of Ravel's Tornado GR1 170 second scale. So although it comes in the traditional camouflage, I'll be doing the Gulf War scheme and to complement that, I have a set of decals from Kits World and this gives four different options for the Snoopy Airways. I also have the Ares upgrade set for the cockpit. This is a resin set. The kit itself doesn't actually come with flight crew because you're not going to have flight crew in there. I might as well do it with the canopy open and display the cockpit in there. So it's going to be worth having that. And for reference, I'm going to be using an old magazine that I had from the mid 90s. And one of the reasons I want to do a 70 second Gulf War tornado is because this magazine for the first probably 10 parts of it came with the instructions and pieces to actually make one of these. In fact, it was Debbie from Snoopy Airways. So I'm gonna see if I can try to recreate that. I did it when I was a teenager and my skills at the time were probably okay, but I was actually very pleased with how it came out. I remember I was using the humble enamel paints. So obviously I'm gonna to try to do things a little bit differently, but I need the decals to do that. However, in here, there is a great article all about the Gulf War and some great pictures and illustrations really illustrating what the tornadoes actually got up to. So I've got that and also for reference I have a salute to the tornado. It's a magazine that was put out when the tornado was uh, retired last year and of course it goes through the whole tornado history. Some great reference pictures in here and what's really nice is although they're not all of the tornado I'm going to be making you can actually just see how weathered and dirty these actually got. That desert pink cam scheme that was painted on was a temporary paint that was put over the traditional cam that it has and of course it all started wearing off and under the very hot weather conditions the sunlight really bleached it as well they were just doing a hundred foot over the desert floor kicking up all that dust so they really were mucky so I'm going to try to really try to replicate that and that should make it quite fun so first thing I'm actually going to do with a kit is I've looked at the instructions and it is actually to build the cockpit and as the cockpit is going to be the Aries one then actually I can just miss out pretty much all of that and start with the Aries one first of all and then get it fitted however I do need to do some checking because I believe I'm gonna to have to do a bit of adapting to the fuselage before the Aries cockpit will go in so for comparison I have actually made the cockpit and the seats that come with the kit. I'll paint them up later, I haven't put the seats in, I'll try and detail those later. However, it does look quite detailed. I believe there's decals that will actually go with that. And to be honest, that is actually looking all right. Uh, I, to be honest, for 70 second scale, especially if the canopy was gonna be down, would see absolutely no problem of putting that in. Some very detailed seats. I'm gonna be doing the Aries resin accessory kit. So let's see what we've got in here. I've taken out the instructions already. Just, it's a single sheet and it is literally just for the can, uh, cock. It is just for the cockpit itself. So first of all, a little film for the instrument panel. So that has got the dials. So that will go behind the photo etch part. So you've got the resin there and talking. That will go behind the photo etch part. So you've got the dials on there. And talking of the photo etch, there it is. It's only a small sheet, but it is actually very thin. So that has got the harnesses on there. So you should be able to bend them around quite nicely. And actually some very, very fine detailing actually on the instrument panel itself. Cockpit tub, which has already got a few knobs and dials on there, which is good. And just see how that compares. Actually, it is quite similar. You can see the pipe works the same, but a lot finer on there. One thing that I will have to make sure on is the depth of this, because before going into the fuselage, the uh, wheel well for the nose wheel needs to be put on the bottom of here so that fits in. 
Then we have the seats, and these are of course on the resin blocks as well. So how does one of those compare? Well, they're similar in size, but to be honest, that is about it. The whole cushions on there, the whole layout of it does look to be completely different. Uh, then we have the main console there. There's not too much detail on, of course. <laughs> The photo etch gives the detail on there. That is very nice, as well as a nice little hood over there. The sun shield for that central display. Those are, of course, on blocks that do need to be cut away carefully. And in here, I got a um, resin piece with uh, one of the pieces has come off. Two little struts on, as well as the main control column. So that's what we've got in the Ares Resin Upgrade Kit. I'm now going to be taking off the blocks and putting that together. Just a little word of warning if you're working with resin, just be careful when you're cutting the resin that you're um, careful that you don't actually get too much dust around because that's the dust that can be the problems in breathing it in. Update on how the Ares set is going into the Tornado Fuselage. And I've having a bit of a tough time with this. I've had to take the big block off, which was an absolute nightmare to cut through. And I've just glued the wheel well in. Normally it would clip onto the bottom of the cockpit tub when it goes in, but obviously you can't do that. I've just had to take a little notch off there as well. But it kind of fits, but it just keeps on not quite wanting to fit. And I've been filing the bottom down, filing the bottom down, so much so that I've actually gone through the bottom of the cockpit in an area there and that bit is just fractions of a millimetre just a gentle tap is going to take that out so I've got no more room for manoeuvre there and it's just a fraction of a millimetre too big and I was getting quite frustrated with this yesterday I ended up managing to cut my thumb right on the part of the thumb that you don't want to get cut where it hurts every time you touch anything and uh, last night just before bed a couple of hours later I had a eureka moment and I remembered that in the Ares upgrade kit was this which is the front of the cockpit and it will replace this part here the hood that goes over the uh, it's the hood that goes over the cox cockpit instruments for the pilot doesn't actually say it in the instructions it just assumes that you're going to realize that so what I need to do is to remove that hood because that one will come in it's still got a block I do need to remove uh, on there but I hopefully if I remove those parts that should then fit in because it was fouling on the bottom of that so hopefully if I cut that off carefully I can slot all that in and I may just need to do a little repair just a little bit of something on the bottom there just so you haven't got a hole in the floor. But as long as that works, that should be fine. Just a bit annoying, I was just getting frustrated and I just didn't bother to look at the instructions to really put two and two together to realize what I needed to do. So next job is to cut off that little hood. We've got one there, cut the blocks off there. And then I think I really should be at the stage where then I can actually start working on the detailing side of the cockpit. Okay, well I think I've got there in the end of getting this to fit in. Uh, just temporary fit at the moment, I need to take it all to pieces again. But I have now managed to get it so that it all fits within the fuselage. It really did fight me every inch, every millimetre and fraction of a millimetre all the way. This front instrument canopy bit, I've just actually tacked that into place with a bit of PVA glue just so I could keep it in position. And I'll break that off again later so I can detail it up. I have actually realised, actually I might as well take that off, actually I'll leave it on there. The uh, rudder pedals will actually cover those holes that I've got in there, as well as when that goes on and that drops in, so that should actually be fine. As you can see, I did actually take too much away, however, and actually no, I took pretty much bang on the right amount there, following the line of the canopy part that was on there, that cover. Uh, even so, there's still going to be some gaps there, so once I've got this all together, I'm going to have to go around there and fill in those gaps anyway. Finally managed to, with blood there's actually need to clean that off a little bit there, blood, sweat and tears have gone into that. However, once that's on there and I get the seats in there, 
get the photo etch that should look quite good. The Aries cockpit is now in the fuselage. The two halves are put together. I've put it in with super glue and put some Tamiya extra thin around the plastic bits to sandwich it together. It does actually fit quite well. I'm going to have to, well, it fits quite solidly. However, there are some massive gaps. And partly to remove that hood part, you've got to cut along the lines actually in the kit, which is actually larger than the replacement part. So once the glue has properly dried and the Tamiya Extra Thin has really gone off and I know it's back to solid plastic, then I'm going to have to re-scribe in a few lines, just do a bit of sanding and filling as well, just to make all that nice and smooth. And also make sure that I put filler around those gaps there and then give it a coat of paint as well. That shouldn't be too bad because to be honest, that bit is going to be under the front of the canopy anyway, so it won't be too obvious, but I'm going to want to make sure it is neat and tidy in there. So that's fine. Next part is to put the wings together. I've taken them off the sprue and cleaned them up. I've kept the pylons in numerical order just to make sure I don't get them muddled up and they've got some little circlips at the top. Uh, those are going to go on so they don't get glued into place. The idea is that those go into place and that will still leave them movable. The wings are now laminated together and the pylons are moving, which is good, so I didn't manage to glue them up at the same time. And they also have quite a good solid feel to it. They're not too wobbly. They should hold position. So those circuits seem to be doing their jobs. Hopefully that will hold. There's a few little gaps here and there that I just need to take care of. Just about to glue the rear tailplanes there. And uh, I noticed actually, it doesn't say that I should glue them. It says that these actually should use a hot, by the look of it, hot screwdriver blade to push down on the tops there. Now I'm assuming that is because uh, they can still pivot a little bit. To be honest, if it all goes wrong, I'll still glue it in place and I can put it in place and just have it in a stationary flat position as long as the, the wings swivel, no one's really gonna notice. That about that but it says in the instructions to do it so I'm going to give it a go and the idea is I should just be able to heat that up push the top bit and that then squashes down so let's see how that goes let's just try and heat that over a candle well, let's give it a, a go it's melting a bit so it just sort of mushrooms out Okay, that needs to go a bit more, but I can see the principle's working actually. Now I've got most of the sub-assemblies together, it's now really a stage of putting it together to really get the main tornado shape. So the cockpit's gone in there, that went in there with some super glue. It was actually quite a good fit, probably because of the effort I went to putting it all in there and took off far too much, so have done a very basic filling job using squadron green putty just to really fill up the big gaps and a few little bits where things weren't quite square. But what I will do is once it's together and there's gonna be other seam lines involved as well once all these parts come together, I'm gonna to probably go over with the perfect plastic putty and make sure that the entire thing is pretty much seam free and only has the joins where it's meant to be. Just for now, put on some XF20, which is a medium gray, just on that little portion there, then masked it up and then carefully try to work out from the instructions where to mask and hopefully that will mean that once it's painted I can take the wings to the fully out position and very carefully pull the masking away. Of course it is going to be a bit sandwiched between there so it could be a bit tricky but hopefully between moving it around I'm going to get that masking tape out there. For now it's really just going to be putting these sub assemblies together just on test fitting this does seem to be a case of put it on there I'm probably going to have to glue it in places, clamp it down, wait for that glue to dry and then work my way around it. It won't be a case of putting it all together in one go.
We've got the intakes on there, giving them a coat of grey on the inside. One thing that I have done is I did mask up the wings where there's the grey which doesn't get the cam when it's uh, on there for the part that actually slides in and out. The masking on that, it turns out, was actually in the wrong place. So I've removed it and we'll just have to try to actually use the body for the masking whilst I'm painting. The air brakes are in the down position. Personally, it's a preference purely from the aesthetic point of view. Got some weight also in the nose. And for that, I've been using uh, something called liquid steel um, from Modeling Tools to put that in with PVA. It needs 10 grams of weight. When I weighed that, that was about five grams. So I've put some more in there and I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough. Really now, it's gonna be a case of putting on a few last little bits and pieces on here, rescribing where the filler is. I think I've got it smooth, but there's gonna be a bit more filing down, a bit more uh, fillering, a bit more filing down, a bit more fillering and rescribing it. I don't wanna go over the top on the rescribing because it is some very fine panel lines. So it's just gonna be more of using a pointy scriber just to try to put some of those lines back in and really just a case of mainly taking the filler out from the more thinner lines around the areas that had to be filled. Pretty much ready together for priming. It's just been a case of putting it together and then running quite a bit of the perfect plastic putty around the joins. They've not been too bad, but hey, the real thing didn't have joins on there. So got to cover them up. Didn't want to get too carried away with the um, sort of Tamiya rescribing tool because the panel lines are very fine in here and if I start trying to rescribe them that's going to emphasize those a lot more than the ones that were already in there so I've just been using a little more needle type scribing things to just gently try to tease them out really to get the filler out of there more than to really scribe things in too much. I've put together the weapon fit and the fuel tanks it comes with the 1500 and the Hindenburger. These are the 2250 litre ones. I did make a mistake. I put the fins on the wrong way round. The way that you think they're gonna go, they're not. It's the other way round. So they sort of um, sweep backwards. But the weird thing is when I put them the wrong way round, it actually looked quite similar to how those fins go, as in that top bit is actually parallel to the airflow. So it actually looked correct but it wasn't correct, it was actually the wrong way around. Just so you know, if you're gonna be doing one, which is Operation uh, Granby, which was the first Gulf War, what happened is they would tend to use the smaller fuel tanks, which also got the desert cam. However, because some of the missions were longer and due to the air-to-air -air refueling, they also used the 200, sorry, the 2,250 tank, but these were taken from the Tornado F3, so they're more of the barley grey colour that the F3 would be, but of course still got a lot more wear and tear being in a low level desert environment. Also got a selection of the thousand pound bombs. So there's the four regular thousand pound bombs or two, which are the guided ones, but get those canopies on there, get them masked up. So what I'll do is once it's masked up, Put the rear part on with blue tack just to hold that in place. I haven't put the ejection seats in or detailed too much of the cockpit yet. I'll wait until after it's painted and then I can finalise those bits. And then get the primer on, uh, check everything. If anything needs any rescribing, I can do that then. Once I'm happy with that, then get that main uh, pinky uh, desert cam on there. So the canopy's been masked. I've put that on just with a bit of blue tack so that can come off, but that should mean that I can spray it. First of all, I'll put some black over it and then put the primer over. That'll mean that when it's in the open position, looking in, it will look like the internal has got the black framework. Then it's gonna be a case of just priming it all up, checking for any gaps, and then I can get on and painting it. Been thinking about what primer to use, and I was gonna use the Mr. Surface 1200, mixed with the South Leveling Thinner, which works really well and gives a really nice smooth finish to it. But I was worried some of the detail on here is very fine, and of course it does have the filling capabilities. I'm sure it would be fine, but what I'm gonna use instead is the AK Interactive Primer. This does also have microfiller as well, but hopefully not as much as the 1200. 
and I'm also going to do it in white. I wasn't too sure what colour to go for, but as I'm going to be doing this in a desert scheme, and it's going to be having a more yellow, lighter tones going on, I've decided I'm going to go for the white primer, and that way that should keep it more lighter colour, and then I can darken it up with the weathering going on top because these birds did get quite weathered but I don't want it to be too dark to start with before putting more weathering on top of it. I'm not going to do any pre-shading. I think if I'd done black pre-shading on the white might be a bit too stark, especially with the lighter colour cam going on there as well, the desert cam. is going to be quite a yellowy, sort of um, quite a base of yellow. So it might be a bit too stark with the pre-shading on there. And the panel lines are quite fine. So I'm not too sure I'm going to err on the side of caution. And to be honest, what sometimes happens is you do all the pre-shading, the paint goes on and you lose it all anyway. Four parts of the Sand Ivory, that's Vallejo 71.075, plucked to one part of Vallejo 71.079, which is Tan Earth, so four of that to one of that should give quite a good approximation to the actual colour. I'm going to mix up in a little pot that I've got, a little um, eyedropper pot. These are great, I've got them really cheap off of eBay, I think I've got 100 for a couple of quid. And these are good because they're basically like a little mini um, model air bottle anyway. I would say it's not exactly a four to one ratio, it's probably about a three to three and a half to one ratio. I put in 40 of the ivory and then 10 of the tan. That was sort of getting close enough, I didn't have quite enough in so I doubled it up so I ended up with about 80-20 which is the 4 to 1 ratio. Uh, but then added in a few more drops, probably about 10 more drops roughly of the tan just to darken it a little. It still looks a bit light but then I remembered of course I'm going to be putting on quite heavy weathering on this as well. I've finished up the paint and then sealed it with the floor polish, the Pledge multi-surface floor polish. Once that's done, that's given me quite a nice sort of satin finish on there. And then put the decals on. I must say, the Kits World 
decals went on really nicely actually. I realised afterwards there's actually, although it's only a small sheet, there's actually enough to do four different planes. So if you wanted to, you could do four different planes from Operation Brand B. Uh, done the fuel tanks, both the large and the small ones. Done the larger ones in the grey, because when they first went out to the Gulf, they were so quick that they actually took some of the larger fuel tanks from the F3 Tornado. You didn't even get around to painting them, just got them on there. As well as the thousand pound bombs and also the laser guided ones. Now what I want to do is to bring out some of this fine detail on there using Tamiya accent colour. This is the dark brown so this should work quite nicely on there and it will also help weather it as well. So it should bring out the panel lines without being too contrasty. If it was pure black that might be a bit too much and hopefully that will really make it start popping out. I'm not a fan of having panel lines that are really really stand out. I do try to have a, um, a realism there because it is sometimes quite easy to get carried away with it and they can be a bit too stark and then it looks good but it doesn't look realistic. Once the panel lines are on there I can then work out what other weathering I want to do. Really liking the effect that the Tamiya panel line accent colour worked. That was the dark brown and it works nicely with the desert cam. The panel line's really starting to pop out and it's also started to weather it nicely because I put on a bit too much and just let it run with the capillary action but sort of brushed it on a little bit more, especially over some of the areas where there's rivets so I could just put that on so it would sink in to the rivet areas and once it starts to dry, wipe it off with a cotton bud and it's really started to bring out quite a bit of detail. Well, let's have a go at deckling part two. I've taken off the decals that uh, actually started to peel away when I took off the masking. So I've uh, taken them off, I've then uh, cleaned up the area, I've used the enamel thinners, it went a little bit too far, I actually took it back to the plastic in some places. So I've now just resprayed that. I haven't put any more clear on, I'm thinking that actually it's, it's an all right surface to go on there, so that should be fine. So it's the decals on either side of the nose. The nose art, I need to put a D to replace the H that I took off and also the plane number itself. In here, just water. I'll pop all these in here. And I've got to say, these do go on really well. Now then, the placement of the D is actually higher up on the tail than it was the H. That's already off. So that is going to be just about there. Perfect. Right. Okay, so that is the decals on. It's looking quite fresh and new on that nose part. What I would do is wait for those just to bed down a little more. Then over the next of a couple of hours, give them a few coats of the microsol. That just helps them bed down a little bit, the backing to break down a little bit more so they'll kind of bed into the panel lines. Once they've properly bedded down, I'll then go over and just re-go uh, re over with a bit more of the Tamiya panel line wash. That will hopefully bed it all in and you shouldn't actually really notice the repair where it actually went right down to the plastic after I took the decals off. I started to put on uh, the landing gear, not the wheels yet. I've got a few more lumps and bumps that I want to be putting on, some of the antennas the navigation light and then I can then weather that all in at the same time as I'm weathering those decals in. All I now need to do is to just pretty much finish the weathering on there 
and to do that I just want to put a bit of black smoke going up the tail which will be where the reverse buckets go down for the reverse thrust on landing and it blows up a whole load of exhaust gases up the tail and I think we're gonna pretty much call that done if I've got a little bit in the airbrush I might just do a little bit here and there just underneath on some of those little vents and for that what I would do is to use some black just some regular uh, I've got some actually NATO black there I will probably dull it down and it's quick with some white and also then just put in some thinners so it will actually be a thin grey more than black and then try to use that to gently build the layers up. I think that now finally wraps up my build of Braveau's Tornado GR1 in 172nd scale and I've done this in the Operation Ground B. That's the Gulf War 1 scheme. And I've got to say, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think I may have gone a bit over the top on the weathering. However, looking at some of the reference pictures, these did get really mucky. And although they were sort of cleaned down between missions, I've kind of got a, um, a, a what it probably would have looked like when it got back from a mission, but it's got new ordnance on to go on a new mission. Regarding the ordnance, I thought I'd go with the large Hindenburger from tanks from the F3 Tornado, still in the F3 grey. Don't know if they're a little bit too dark, I'm not too sure. And I've gone for a set of the four uh, £1,000 bombs on the bottom. I quite like the, the clean green with the yellow because those have literally been taken out of storage. So they look actually quite new and I like that contrast on them. The wash itself, mainly for the weathering, I use the Tamiya Dark Accent Panel Line and then brush that in and then used a, um, some cotton, a cotton bud with some enamel you know, thinners on there just to try to blend that in a little bit. I then went over actually because I wanted to try to lighten the fuel tanks there with some Flory Models white and then went over the entire model with that just to try to bleach things down and blend things in a little bit more and then uh, yeah just went on with a bit more of the weathering tried to blend it in and then used some very thinned down Vallejo black with a bit of white just to make it grey just for the smoke effect on the tail and kind of actually went over the whole model with that as a filter. Unfortunately, I did get quite a speckled effect coming through. I should have just cleaned the airbrush out, but I tried to persevere and regretted it. So then using actually just some airbrush thinner or airbrush cleaner on a cotton bud, just gently tried to take that off. I tried to do it in the air direction of the airflow and try to focus on maybe the middle of some of the uh, panels and those sort of things. And actually I think it came out well. Regarding the kit, I've got to say the, the detailing on there, the individual rivets, by the time I actually got that wash in there and then trying to take it off and the filter and the cotton buds, it really, I mean each individual rivet really does actually stand out. But what I'm pleased with is it hasn't just gone for that panel line effect where you're just putting the panel lining in to really make it stand out too much. It does actually blend in and from my eyes it doesn't look like it's really jumping out. In reality they wouldn't stand out that much anyway. However it's a model and it's an interpretation of reality. And I think actually if that hadn't gone on there and I hadn't done that weathering to get those panel lines out, it would have just looked quite plain, and that's not really what I wanted. Um, you know, there is so much detail, and that is fine detail, and I remember it when I was reviewing it, thinking that's not gonna come out in the end. And by the time it has actually had the primer coat on there, then the paint on there, which was the mix of the Vallejo paints, and then the clear coat on there, uh, I'm actually surprised about how much the weathering has actually stayed in there, and you can pick out all those individual rivets. The wings do actually move and the pylons do actually swivel as well. However, um, I'm just leaving them in that position. The rear tail planes, they did actually swivel, but I've then since glued them into position. I use the Ares upgrade set, and I've got to say, in comparison to the cockpit in there, which is actually quite good, I would say. If you're just doing it straight out of the box, it would be a good cockpit. But I do think that Ares upgrade set really has given it the extra detail. Uh, so I am pleased with that. I mean, I do think actually we are missing, uh, if you look down the air intakes, there's nothing in there, it does sort of go back. 
Um, only a minor thing. If I'd realised it, I probably would have just put a bit of card or something just to block any light in there. But it's actually really only if you're looking right at the right angles. Those decals went down really nicely. That's my build of Ravel's Tornado GR1 RAF and 172nd, and that's 04619 for 15 20 pound. This has kept me quiet for about six weeks. It is really detailed, and some of the detail on here, especially on the back, um, yeah, when you look at it, that fine riveting detail on there, those fine little panel lines. Um, I showed a friend of mine on a picture of it and he actually came back to ask what scale it was in. He didn't think it was actually a 70 second scale model just from the amount of detail that was on there. I'm Robert, I hope you have enjoyed this. Please subscribe to Rob's Models and I look forward to seeing you soon.